Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'll tell you what, it's a morning for me because it's about 5.30 a.m. It's freezing cold where I'm at, but I have a lot to do today, so i got to get this show on the road and get it moving. This is going to be an audio-only podcast. I know I've been putting up stuff on YouTube, but today it's going to be audio-only. So if you're looking for the uh, video on YouTube, it's not going to happen because I have things to do. Now, you're asking yourself, why is he playing Dude Looks Like a Lady? Well... There's, uh, there's some reasons why. You can now get paid $900 a month to identify as a transgender person. Yes, that is correct. A California city is planning to give universal basic income to transgender and non-binary residents. Transgender residents in Palm Springs, California are eligible to receive a UBI of up to $900 per month solely for identifying as a transgender or non-binary. No strings attached, no dicks attached. You just say you're a female or you're transgender and you can get 900 bucks a month. Now, they've only set aside $200,000 for allocation after a, a unanimous, a unanimous vote by Palm Springs City Council last week. Now, if you're in Palm Springs and they're unanimously, there wasn't one dissenting voice. It's like we are unanimously in support of getting trans people 900 bucks a month. If that's how you identify in Palm Springs. So uh, my question is, is what are the qualifications? I mean, do you have to have your own drag persona? What do you have to do? Because I'm about ready to put in an application to get my 900 bucks a month. My new name is going to be Jake Afina. Um, I, I am a man that identifies as a woman that dresses like a man. Take that. Touche. Checkmate. Give me my $900. No, you can't do that. Why not? Why not? That is what I identify as. My pronouns are he, her, he, her, oh, fuck. Those are my pronouns. Okay? And I, and, and I want to be responded to as oh, fuck. Okay? So I'm a, I'm a non-binary transgender female that dresses like a man okay uh i'll give you my address you can send me the check and let you know we'll just get to that here in a little bit palm springs yeah the decline of our civilization is this normal i don't think it's normal at all man we live we live in a comic strip we live in a upside down world i'm telling you people it is so upside down all right Luke Combs, Beer Never Broke My Heart. Yes, this is an audio podcast where some of these songs play into the stories. So how could Beer Never Broke My Heart play into the news today? Well, there's an Ohio man that happens to go on an all-beer diet for Lent to lose weight and gain money for charity. This guy is a freaking hero. So an Ohio man decided to give up everything but beer for Lent. And he's using it to raise money for charity. So this guy's done it before. Uh, apparently, let's see. He's saying right here, day one of Lent 2022. I'm about 325 pounds of this pick from years ago. Today, I weighed 269 pounds. I'm shooting for a 44-pound weight loss this year. Uh, so he's lost weight in the past. Let's see. Uh, he has a picture here of him in his 2018 before beer only diet where he lost well, how many pounds did he lose he went from 325 to 269 the first time around and he's wanting to lose another 44 pounds this time is this safe Del Hall the co-owner of Ohio's 16 lots brewing company began his all beer diet in 2019 over the 40 day fast not only did he lose 40 pounds but Hall said that he felt great in the process ever since Hall decided to make this fast his tradition but he began to add to his gold, to his unusual diet in 2020, raising money for charity while also losing weight. This guy's a hero. According to his GoFundMe page from 2020, Hall lost 50 pounds and raised $10,000 for a charity during the pandemic. While many worry about his health over the 40 days. Okay, how healthy can it be just drinking beer? Beer only for 40 days. That's your total cal cal caloric intake. Paul has said in the past he consulted his doctor about the choice. Okay, so what did his doctor have to say? She said, you're an idiot. <laughs> 
Isn't that about right? You're an idiot if you're going to do this. You're an idiot if you do this. But she knows how strong-willed I am, Hall said. Once she knew I was determined to see this through, she recommended I take multivitamins, stay hydrated, and she told me not to do anything stupid. Not to do anything stupid other than the fact that he's on a beer diet. Well, this guy, this guy definitely gets my vote for a uh, 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 humanitarian award, human of the month, the all beer diet. I think I could do that. I think I could do an all day, all, all beer diet for Lint. that afternoon delight is on a southwest flight going from seattle to phoenix now proof positive that america is off the rails and people have lost common sense altogether this is a story from uh, yesterday april 4th and what it is is mr antonio mcgarrity a southwest airlines passenger he was arrested and you might ask what he was arrested for. He was arrested for masturbating four times during flight. <laughs> All right, how long is that flight from Seattle to Phoenix? What is it like? It's got to be less than three hours, right? I, I'm, I'm pretty much impressed with the guy's recovery time to be jerking off four times during the flight. Okay, now, I don't want to come to his defense at all, but but let me read this story because it sounds like there might be something fishy. I don't know. Anyways, it says here a Southwest Airlines passenger was arrested for allegedly masturbating four times and exposing himself to a horrified witness. Now, the passenger faces charges related to the, indecent, uh, to the incident. Uh, he has indecent exposure, obscene, or lewd acts as he has been listed on the no-fly list of the airline. Now, I think... Not not only should he be listed on the no fly list of Southwest, but if this is accurate, he should be he should be uh, listed on the no fly list for anything. So there is another passenger. Well, first the passenger Antonio McGarity, the the, the chronic masturbator. Um, this flight happened on April second, twenty twenty two, from Seattle to Phoenix. A criminal complaint alleges that shortly after the plane began its journey. McGarity lowered his pants and masturbated at least four times while sitting next to a female passenger. According to the complaint, the female passenger claims that McGarity masturbated in front of her on four separate occasions. Okay, how does this... This is where it gets fishy, right? How how does this happen where she sits through four instances of this? Doesn't that seem like something's not quite right on this story? Anyway, she says while sitting next to him, uh, according to the complaint, the female passenger claims that McGarity masturbated in front of her on four separate occasions using both his left and right hands. Now, okay, that's another clue. I mean, how many guys are ambidextrous with their with their with their uh, masturbatory skills? All right, that seems a little off here. I'm just I'm just pointing out some details. I'm not coming to the guy's defense, but he's ambidextrous four times and the fact that the chick sit, sat next to him through all four times and 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 okay 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 don't you hit the call button the call button for the uh for the stewardess to come running over and say uh yeah excuse me ma'am um he's got his dick in his hand both hands left and right uh isn't there something that you can do well, anyways, the complaint states that McGarity was seated in seat 11f and the female witness was seated in seat 11e Shortly after taking off and while the aircraft was in the air, McGarity exposed himself by pulling down his pants and shorts and began masturbating. The, the complaint also states that as evidence, when McGarity was sleeping, the female passenger took photos of the man with his pants down. Then she asked to change seats. OK, OK, see, see, this is this is this is flaw number three. OK, if there's a guy that is next to you masturbating and you're appalled by it, 
why don't you take a picture when he's masturbating and say, hey, airline stewardess, look, look what this guy's doing. I just took this picture of him. Why would you wait till he's asleep to take the picture? I, I'm just a little curious of what's going on. The female passenger took photos of the man with his pants down. Then she asked to change seats. Once the plane arrived, Phoenix police officers questioned the woman who said McGarrity masturbated in front of her on four separate occasions using both his left and right hands. That seems to be a very critical component of this, that he used both, both his left and right hands. So McGarrity was questioned by FBI special agents. Can you imagine being an FBI special agent? You know, you're, you're sitting there, you're near the airport, you're having your donut, you're having a good time. And the call comes in that, hey, we've got a chronic mas masturbator that's landing at the airport. I need you guys to go investigate it. I mean, that's <laughs> that's got to suck. It's really got to suck. Uh, so anyways, uh, Garrity reportedly admitted to touching himself and further claims that he asked. OK, here we here we go. Here we go. You know, he he made it past the no means no, because he asked the female passenger if she would mind it. And she said she wouldn't mind it. He told officers he asked the female witness if she minded if he masturbates. According to McGarrity, the female witness put her hands in the air and said, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. That's consent, right? Consenting adults on a plane. Uh, you know, the complaint also adds the document also notes that McGarrity thought what he was doing was kind of kinky. You know what I mean? It's romantic. It's a little a bit of kinky. You know, he thought maybe the chick was into it. Now, after an investigation, McGarrity has been arrested and authorities said he is facing charges related to the incident of obscene and lewd acts. According to the report by The Sun, Southwest Airlines commented on the incident, saying on April 2nd, crew members received reports of inappropriate customer behavior during a flight from Seattle to Phoenix, and the captain requested that law enforcement meet the aircraft upon arrival. We immediately placed a passenger on our no-fly list, resulting in a lifetime ban from traveling on Southwest Airlines. Money. All right, here's a list of item-by-item uh, item look at how much more expensive your groceries are due to inflation, okay? Everybody's complaining about inflation, the price of groceries, which is going to get a whole lot worse, but here we are today. All right, so what I'm comparing is the price of items from February 2021 and the price now. So basically, a bag of oranges, a three-pound bag of oranges used to be four seventy. Now it's five forty-eight. That's a difference of seventy-eight cents. Ground beef, two pounds, used to be ten dollars twenty-one cents. Now it's eleven eighty-two. So it's up thirteen percent. Lando Lakes margarine used to be two eighty-one. Now it's three seventeen. It's up eleven percent. Eglin's Grade A eggs, a package of twelve, used to be two ninety-two. Now it's three twenty-nine. It's up eleven point four percent. Milk. 3.74 in 2021. Now it's 421. That's up 11.2%. Why are oranges? Oranges are the leader. Oranges are the thing that's gone up the most. It's up 14%. Anyways, uh, Intamins, classic rich frosted donuts, used to be $4.63 for 16 ounces. Now it's 521. It's up 11.2%. Hungry Man Boneless Fried Chicken, uh, $3.55, is up to 3 dollars and 99 cents it's up 11.1 percent starbucks coffee is up 10 percent campbell's soup is up 10 percent chips ahoy cookies eight and a half percent two heads of lettuce is up 7.9 percent golden delicious apples up 7.8 percent corn flakes up 7.5 percent spam classic canned ham who the hell eats that is up 7.1 percent uh, chewing gum, chewing gum for all you single people that need to get your groove on at the club and need to have fresh breath is up 7.1%. Wonder Bread White is up 6.5%. And at the bottom here, Russell Potatoes is up 3%. So those are the cost hikes that we're seeing at the market today. You know, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. Russia, major grain exporter, major fertilizer exporter. It's going to impact a lot of things. Um... Yeah, it's going to get nasty.
right, we've got a trio of stories today. Seems like the revolution is on its way. And these are three school stories, or education stories, or uh, basically states standing up against the government with all the nonsense. First off, what we have is Ohio Republicans introduce a Florida-like parental rights bill. Now, two Ohio House Republicans introduced a bill on Monday similar to Florida's recently signed Parental Rights and Education Law, also known as the Don't Say Gay Law. And uh, it would ban instruction regarding sexual orientation and gender identity for kindergarten through third grade. This is House Bill 616. It was introduced by Representatives Mike Loichik and Gene Schmidt. Now, they're just introducing the bill. Doesn't mean it's going to pass. I don't know how conservative the Ohio... Uh, governor is if he's going to get behind it like DeSantis did but the quote here is curriculum about gender identity and sexuality has no place in K through third classrooms period according to Loichik that's why I just introduced a bill to ban curriculum about sexuality and gender identity until third grade in Ohio he added he also says the classroom is a place that seeks answers for our children without political activism Schmidt said in the statement parents deserve and should be provided and say provided a say in what's taught in their children's schools. So that bill is on the books in Ohio. Uh, it's going to be going through the you know the whole legislature process. We'll see if it gets any steam or not. Now, something that's a little more steri- serious is Christy Noem. Noem, I don't know how you say her last name, uh, but anyways, she signed an executive order. And if you don't know who that is, she's the South Dakota governor, Christy Noem. And on Tuesday, she signed an executive order. Uh, she said was aimed at banning the teaching of critical race theory in K through 12 in state schools. The order tasked the State Department of Education with checking educational materials for dis- divisive divisive concepts based on race. And I quote, political indoctrination has no place in our classrooms. The governor said in a statement, our children will not be taught that they are racist or that they are victims and they will not be compelled to feel responsible for the mistakes of their ancestors. We will guarantee that our students learn America's true and honest history. That includes both our triumphs and our mistakes. The executive order comes after the state Senate Education Committee, led by Republicans, rejected a similar bill she proposed. Uh, They rejected it four to three in early March. The committee passed a similar bill related to the state's university system. It bans teaching and trainings that would make people feel discomfort based on race. And two more stories regarding education. And this is another sign of the revolution because there's been an alert that came in. Let's see. This came in at like 4.18 a.m. So I, I'm assuming it happened last night. But anyways, two anti-critical race theory candidates, Kelly Byrne and Steve Mikowski, have unseated an incumbent and won the election for Springfield, Missouri school board. Yay. Byrne and Mikowski were opposed by the teachers union. Yeah, no kidding. And local chamber of commerce. However, like we've said before, when the parents band together, when they start paying attention, they can elect the people that they want. School boards control the schools, and so they they uh, they elected these two, Kelly Byrne and Steve McCoskey. Congratulations to them. I expect to see a lot more of this. Now, in the final story that we're covering regarding schools, what it is is 15, 15 states are uh, threatening to sue the Biden administration over his whole thing about, you know, women in uh, are the integrity of women's sports. In other words, uh, it's a they're, they're going to sue because they're going to try and ban dicks from women's sports, which is completely 100 percent logical. Anyways, it says here, Montana is leading 14 states in threatening legal action against the Department of Education in an effort to protect the integrity of women's sports. It says here, we are prepared to take legal action to uphold the Title IX's plain meaning and safeguard the integrity of women's sports. That was Montana Attorney General Austin Knudsen, and he wrote that to the Civil Rights Division of the Biden Education Department in a letter signed by 14 other state attorney generals on Tuesday. The attorneys general wrote that they are alarmed about the Department of Education's intent to propose new regulations implementing Title IX 
and argued the department has failed to provide sufficient justification for engaging in a new rulemaking. We therefore urge the department to halt its effort and not disturb the current Title IX regulations. According to this letter signed by attorney generals, they also said the department should also not illegally rewrite Title IX to include gender identity, make the right choice for the rule of the law, as well as students, parents, teachers, and schools. In addition to Nudson's letter, it was also signed by the Attorney General of Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Idaho, Indiana, Kentucky, Louisiana, Missouri, Nebraska, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Carolina, South Dakota, and Texas. States are starting to stand up. They're starting to buck this system. They're starting to say, no, no, hell no, we won't go. A little bit of a protest from the state's attorney generals. Let's see how this pans out. And I think the state should stand up about this. You know, enough is enough. Now the final story of the day, and I had to double check this story, and and this is the pathetic reason why. Because Biden, Biden, his Coast Guard pick would become the first woman to command a military branch, okay? So I saw this story, I saw the picture, and uh, I immediately had to start Googling, making sure this wasn't another transgender female that Biden was appointing. And she's not, so my, you know, it, it was a little questionable. You know, and with Biden's administration, I don't know what's going on. They could say it's the first woman and it, and it could be the first woman with a dick, you know, like the, the, the women to won the most money on Jeopardy had a dick. So, you know, I have to verify the actual uh, sexual genetic sexual uh, dis- disposition of this person because it could be a gender identity thing that could throw us all off. Uh, but I am happy to announce that this is an actual female. Okay, it's an actual female that Biden is picking to run the Coast Guard. And President Biden has nominated Admiral Linda Fagan to serve as the next uh, commandant of the U.S. Coast Guard, the administration announced on Tuesday. If confirmed, Fagan would be the first woman ever to lead a branch of the U.S. military. Uh, I mean, it's the small branch, you know, we're going to let the women start with the Coast Guard. Uh, you know, the, one of the, you know, the lower branches is not the Air Force or the, Mil- or the uh, Marines or the Army or the Navy, but it's something. It's something. So this uh, woman, Admiral Linda Fagan, uh, congrats to her. Uh, the quote here is that, that Admiral Fagan's nomination will inspire generations of American women to strive to serve at the highest level in the armed forces. Actual women, an actual role model for women. This is a rarity in today's society that it's an actual woman not a dick woman that is nominated to something you know great so congratulations to her now i'll tell you what this is jake with radio underland and this has been a quick just jaunt through the news 24 minutes of just rapid fire news you can email me at jake at radiounderland.com if you have any questions other than that hail to the chief i'll see you later be good people and have fun